anyone looking for a performance laptop that can do both work and gaming at a price which is affordable should watch this. The rest of you can stay if you like to. Welcome to Forest Tech. As always, we bring you tech reviews, tips and tutorials to help you live life smarter. And today I have the Legion Y7000. Starting with its design, Lenovo Y7000 has a design which is rethought because you don't have those fancy painted grills in red. This time Lenovo goes with a basic, simpler is better sort of approach. So here you get the wedge design with aluminium lid on top and Legion logo that lits up in white. On the back you get grills that looks like vents from a sports car and two huge vents at the bottom of the laptop. Opening the laptop, the hinge is centrally placed, holding the lid from bending or wobbling. Three-sided bezels makes use of the maximum viewing area, however the lid can only be bent up to 140 degrees. Coming below you get comfortable rubberized palm rests that dips inside the keyboard area. From the looks of it, I was hoping this to be a slightly bulkier laptop, but to be honest, it's not that heavy, 2.3 kg of the weight is quite decent for a gaming laptop. The form factor is small and the construction, it feels firm. So you get decent selection of ports located on the back between the vents. This includes Kensington Lock, Power Input, Ethernet, HDMI, USB 3.1, DisplayPort Mini and a Type-C port that supports displays as well. On the right you get a USB 3.1 port and Novo recovery button so you can press to log into the recovery system or BIOS utility when your computer fails to start. On the left you have another USB 3.1 port with combo audio jack. There is no Thunderbolt but I do really miss the memory card slot. I mean I transfer my media from SD card to laptop pretty much every single day and that's something I really miss with this. Now Lenovo has a legacy of most comfortable chick like keyboards and this one is no different. As compact as it seems from the appearance, it's still the nicest keyboards to type on. Keys have deeper key travel with a distance of 1.7mm. That makes typing very responsive, yet fairly quiet. Packed cleverly with a full numpad that has slightly smaller keys, making it all a fairly accessible typing experience. We do get two brightness levels for keyboards backlight, considering its potential for gamers I really do miss the RGB lighting. It has a single button precision touchpad that is adequately sized, not too large or small, placed with enough room from above and below. Gestures works like they should and the accuracy is spot on. It's not a matte but a plastic finish which surprisingly hasn't cost any sweat. Now I'm gonna admit it is one of the quickest boots. I'm gonna turn it on and you guys gonna check it out. How quickly does it actually boot? Just above the power button and at the bottom edge of the lid lies the nose-up camera with stereo microphones. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the power of shortcut keys. So using FN plus F10 and FN plus F4 keys to disable your camera and your... Now the screen, which is a 15.6 inch panel with 300 nits of brightness, contrast ratio is sharp as text and images are rendered clear with distinction even at the very lowest of its brightness. Brighten it up and you'll love it at the widest of the viewing angles. The blacks are deep but I do feel the colors tilting a little bit towards the warmer side, especially when you're watching movies. You can control the brightness for as low as 1% and can even turn it off when you need to save some battery. On my 1080p 60Hz panel, I've not seen any backlight bleeding. Getting inside isn't hard, just a couple of screws and pry open the cover and you'll have access to most of the upgradables. So Lenovo Y7000 features a 6-core i7-8750H processor, clocking at 2.2GHz, it's powerful enough for multitasking at ease and can run applications like Office, get graphic designing applications, CAT softwares, with 16 gigs of RAM, that is upgradable to 32 gigs. Along with its 256GB Samsung M.2 SSD and 1TB of Seagate SATA drive, 
you can have it prepared to store and run most of your AAA titles at full HD. But the fans are not the quietest of the lot and they're quite audible even at lighter loads. Most latest titles would run on full HD, easy on medium to high settings, and some may spare their fun on ultra settings with decent frame rates, as you should be hoping from a gaming laptop. Speakers placed at the bottom, they're not the ideal ones. Uh, if you listen to a lot of reggae, hip hop or jazz, then they're not the ideal fit for you. But if you're into something which is more ambient or calm, then you might be fine with the speaker's output. For gamers, I would recommend a pair of headphones to set the right balance for your gaming venture. Now it comes preloaded with Dolby Audio, which is tuned for Lenovo, but I don't see a lot of improvement even if you're using some of their EQs. Now the battery is quite impressive considering it's a gaming laptop. I get about five to six hours on normal day-to-day -day tasks with internet turned on and get around an hour and a half for gaming. That's the most you can get really. Now let's have a look at some of the benchmarks. Now the thermals are well cool for usual tasks, the laptop's fans run fast and we do get a lot going on, two fans and a couple of heat pipes, but at idling we have the fans audible. Playing games or performance intensive tasks will warm up the laptop from center to outwards, making it unusable for on-lap usage. So just a few things you got to keep in mind before you put your hands onto this laptop. It doesn't have a memory card, it doesn't have your favorite RGB lighting, and it will get warm if you're into gaming, which I think is pretty average if you consider most of the gaming laptops that are out there. But it has its upsides. You've got really good specs coming up. You've got a really good budget line that you should be considering. You've got a bright screen. You've got a lot of connectivity options. And then there's good thermal and cooling going on overall in this laptop. So. That's something you gotta keep in mind if you're going for this laptop. Do let me know if you'll be purchasing the Y7000 Legion. If not, which other laptop will you be buying next? I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be seeing you with another review. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.